Welcome to a new vlog. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at this gadget. It's called the Nitro OBD2 Performance Chip Tuning Box. But before we get started, let me take a few moments to remind you to click the small bell icon right next to the subscribe button. YouTube doesn't put much weight on small channels like mine, so if you'd like to get the notification each time I upload a new video, it's important to click the bell notification icon. Now back to our topic, notice this is uh, especially designed for diesel cars, it says it right here, and since it's using the buzzword Nitro and OBD2, this sounds like it might just work. For sure some company has invested time and money into finding the secret sauce to put into this thing to make it work and boost performance. They claim this fits all cars after 1996 and all you have to do is plug this into the OBD port drive for 200 kilometers so the device can learn and adjust your car and after that you will benefit from 35% more power and 25% more torque. It even says here on the box that it will enable fuel saving. So this sounds pretty much like the holy grail in car ECU tuning. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. But of course if you have any experience with electronics and life in general you can't believe that this is going to save any fuel or boost any performance just by plugging into the OBD port. So that's why I purchased this so we can take a better look inside and also because I needed an OBD2 connector plus enclosure for a project of mine. I plan to do some CAN bus sniffing and do something with that data but maybe I'll talk about that in a future video. Before I open this for a teardown, let's think about it for a second. As far as I know, there is two ways in which you can electronically improve the performance of a car. First, through a ECU remap by uploading a new map into the ECU, it will behave differently according to the new map or you can manipulate the inputs to the ECU by inserting an electronic device between the uh, sensors and the ECU. Thus, you trick it into thinking that it needs to inject more fuel or something like that by manipulating the sensor values. So first let's consider the ECU remapping which is usually done with expensive equipment that connects to the uh, car ECU via the OBD port or sometimes it needs to be done by opening the ECU and directly flashing the processor via JTAG. Could such a small gadget do that? Well, no, of course not. It would probably need terabytes of data to store ECU maps for all possible ECUs from 1996 onwards like they claim on the um, uh, product packaging. It would also need a lot more hardware to possibly flash all of those different ECUs and it's certainly not feasible. Second, let's consider the option of messing with the sensor values. Well, sensors need to run the engines in general and they are connected directly to the ECU. Having this dongle in the OBD port would not grant you any access to modify the sensor data before it reaches the ECU. Even if there is sensor data which travels over the CAN bus and might be accessible from the OBD port, it would cause conflicts and problems on the network if you would simply try to send conflicting data on the same bus. I can't imagine any other way something like this would work. If you think of another way this could work, please let us know in the comments below. Of course, just in theory because we all know in practice it's not going to work. There is also the cost issue. This thing costs little more than $2 with free shipping from eBay or AliExpress. So when you buy something that costs $2, don't expect it to be worth more than $2. That's just common sense. But enough talking, let's open the gadget and see if we just get a bunch of resistors and LEDs inside because uh, I can see a few holes on here and I bet there are LEDs beneath those. It was very easy to pry this open, just a few small clips on the sides. 
and uh, we get a uh, double decker in here we have two PCBs stacked together with connectors I wasn't expecting this I was expecting a single PCB just to make this as cheap as possible but no they have two PCBs in here unfortunately this is soldered not sure we're going to be able to remove this I needed to check the activity of this thing before I move any forward with the uh, teardown uh, this is a uh, pinout diagram for a, an OBD2 port and so I've connected uh, plus 12 volts and ground and this is the activity we're getting just the uh, red LED blinking every few seconds uh, it might do something different later if it, it takes uh, time into account uh, but so far this is uh, the only thing I've seen it do and um, at the start when power is applied or when the circuit is reset because this is connected to the reset of the microcontroller uh, all three LEDs turn on and then it goes into that uh, blinking the red LED cycle so that's basically all it does there is no activity on the uh, CAN bus line on pins 6 and 14 and uh, also none on the uh, K line or uh, this uh, SAAJ bus no activity whatsoever I've uh, checked with an oscilloscope I'm curious as to what current this thing will be pulling because if the current is high enough it might drain a car battery over a longer time period so let's uh, measure that at start it's 44 milliamps because all three LEDs are on but then when it goes into that standby mode where it only blinks the red LED it's around 10 milliamps with uh, a few short spikes when the uh, red LED turns on 10 milliamps is not too bad it uh, would take uh, 290 days to drain a 70 amp hour battery with uh, 10 milliamps uh, but of course you're going to start the car uh, within that period so the battery will get recharged I've completely disassembled this and uh, here is what I found um, on this uh, left pin header we only have plus 12 volt and ground coming from the CAN bus connector and this goes through a uh, polarity protection diode which is on the input of the 78MO5 linear regulator I'm surprised to see that they have filtering caps on the input and on the output of this regulator and also surprised to see that there is this tactile switch in here which is actually connected to the reset pin of the microcontroller which sits on the back of this PCB this is probably one of those uh, PDAUC or something similar to send microcontroller uh, it's an 8 pin device and all that does it it controls these three LEDs each with its own current uh, limiting resistor on this uh, other pin header we have some signals connected from the OBD connector up to the pin header but then on when it goes on the second PCB there's like only two signals which are connected to the microcontroller and those are not the uh, actual CAN bus uh, connectors I believe those are these unused pins pins 3 and uh, pins 11 which uh, are um, vendor specific uh, pins but in general they are not used in the uh, CAN bus uh, connection and they cannot influence how a, a car works in any way these two pins these two signals which are actually connected to the uh, microcontroller uh, through these two VRs are connected to some small resistors I believe these are connected as pull-up resistors and uh, they are 10k in value but the uh, CAN bus I kind of see what they're trying to do here but the CAN bus specifications tell you that the uh, lines need to be terminated with 120 ohms and they have 10k in here so they're trying to mimic a uh, CAN bus termination resistor but uh, someone who knows the the value of those termination resistors will obviously know that this is not the case here 
Of course, you can imagine those uh, that are not tech savvy might get tricked into thinking something like this works because they see the LEDs flashing and they think something is really happening. If they're curious enough to take this apart, they will see some chips in here, they will see some signals connected and they start to see the magical effects, they start to feel the car performing differently but it's all in their heads because all that this gadget does is pull 10 milliamps from your battery to blink these LEDs. It will not change anything in the car's behavior because, well, first, it's really hard to do that even with the proper equipment, but this is certainly not the proper equip equipment and it doesn't even have the required uh, connections from the OBD uh, connector going to this uh, two cent microcontroller which is probably uh, capable of much less than it would need to do that job. So I hope this uh, video will be shown to those who are planning to purchase something like this. Uh, they might uh, avoid being scammed. It's not a huge amount, it's two or three dollars if you get it from AliExpress or maybe double that if you get it from Amazon or something closer uh, to you but in general it's good to know what you're buying and uh, don't let yourself scammed by something like this. I'm amazed by the fact that the sellers who um, sell these things uh, don't even have that much negative feedback so there are tons of people purchasing these and giving positive feedback to the sellers which is crazy because those people must be thinking these are really working. Thank you for watching. I hope this was uh, interesting for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Maybe hit that like button and I'll see you next week with a new video.